live folks. Uh, welcome to this week's Tuesday Night Live. Excited to be here, lots of cool stuff to talk about and uh, and to get into. I'll wait until a few of you guys hop online and then we'll start going through some news articles and uh, getting into this evening. So uh, yeah, lots of cool things to talk about. viewers on there give us a, a like drop us a message if you can hear everything and we'll get straight into tonight's live thanks a lot for spending your tuesday night uh, watching this live if it's another time that you're listening to this thanks a lot for tuning in and spending an hour of your time or so listening to what i have to say and what i think is happening out there and, and all that sort of stuff a few of you were messaging me like, are you okay, Birch? You weren't here last uh, Tuesday. A uh, little funny story. Um, I was, uh, I had a filling in my tooth that uh, needed to get replaced. I needed a crown on it for about 10 years and I was too scared to go to the dentist, right? Throw me in 20 mil worth of debt, right? Um, but, you know, get a filling and I'm scared. So I had this filling that was broken uh, for a few years and I was eating dinner the other night and it keeps chipping away a little bit. It was a 90% of my tooth was a filling and it snapped off and I had to go to the dentist and then I was like, look, let's, uh, let's do it again next week. So uh, yeah, here we are. So um, lots of news articles. I've got some exciting news to share with you. Um, uh, yeah, lots of news. I, as I look at it, I see that female, I'm not even going to say her name because uh, she seems like the devil, it's like you're promoting this female here um, uh, on everything, so it's, it seems very weaponized. but anyway. This article here talking about weapons, unthinkable as the world marches towards World War III. I have some tremendous articles to share with you tonight, some tremendous ones, and I'm going to try and keep them tight and uh, very concise of my message here. So it's a bit of a view of 2024 and what is to lay ahead uh, for the year that we uh, should expect ahead of us. Um, but this one here is an article saying that we could be hitting the World War III. The world knows, as we know, it's about to end. Global strategists and think tanks are scrambling to raise the alarm. It may be World War III. It might be a perpetual deliberate financial crisis. Whatever it is, we're in for a shock and we must prepare. It's like they are preparing us. It's like they're um, you know, programming us to go, well, oh, this is just accepted as we would have expected it to be or, or whatnot. Um, great catastrophes often seem like unthinkable until they happen, he warns. This is a guy called um, Secretary of Defence Robert Gates. Interesting name there, Robert Gates. Um, uh, has thrown a cat among the pigeons with a warning published in International Geopolog Geopolitics Journal. Uh, great catastrophes often seem unthinkable until they happen. Well, obviously, the last few years were uh, a sign of that. As he warns, as the strategic environment deteriorates, it's time to recognise how imminently thinking, thinkable global conflict has become. If a war does engulf multiple theatres of Eurasia, Washington and its allies may not win. So they're talking about a hot war. Um, we've been in a war for, for many years. All our life we've been in a war, but we just haven't seen it Um you know, blow out. So there's lots of, um, you know, conflict that's happening around different parts of the world. Will we see a war? What's going to be the linchpin from this? Uh, who knows what it's going to be? But I think we're on the eve uh, of something massive and amazing happening. Um, I think that we're going to see, you know, whether it's a banking crisis, whether it's, um, you know, some war that just pops up, from somewhere, suddenly fights. Uh, they've all got a backstory. So I always see these people and go, oh, Kim Jong-un, he's a bad guy, right? Or Putin, or he's a bad guy, whatever. I have no thoughts on any of them because I don't know any of them personally. But uh, there's always a backstory. And I like to understand research and see what that backstory is and, and how it comes to be and why they are perceived as being the enemy uh, to, to to the world and a threat to us. So, um so just one thing out there, one of the things this year, or what's going to be the black swan, just remember in March 2023, um, we saw the banking crisis, which saw a bigger banking crisis in 2008, but they just printed straight over that. What did they do uh, to do that? Uh, they purchased or they repurchased short-term bonds 
uh, from those banks and they were 12 month bonds. So those bonds are about to expire and they're actually sinking the banks that bought them. So the banks that bought out the banks last year that went bankrupt are almost about to go bankrupt this year, right? And they're all expiring in the course of the next month. So as we see the next month approach, we're going to see more banks blowing up. So yeah, what are they going to do to save? They'll just print more money. If they print more debt, uh, the US is nearly in $35 trillion worth of debt. And I remember when we were sitting there going, it's at $30 trillion, or it's $25 trillion, now it's $30 trillion, now it's $33 trillion, $34 trillion. And each quarter it's going up about a trillion bucks. But as they print more uh, fiat currency, uh, that's what's going to you know, obviously create more inflation out there. So interesting. The topic and the thing that I'm seeing is I'm going to read you about 10 articles. These ones are very, very important. So if you're watching, make sure to turn off home and away, turn off whatever's on the news, uh, turn off whatever's in the background, um, married at first sight, watch that later. It's not going to be adding to your uh, to your knowledge. But um, there's one very clear trend out there, and that is that we're in a recession. Uh, so we're told. I remember yelling at the cameras a couple of years ago, and I said, we would, if the verbatim words that I was to use, uh, we're going to go through a hyperinflationary depression, right? Uh, we're going to see a hyperinflation, which is inflation like we've never seen before, unless you've fled from a country which has had your currency decimated. Um, and we, we, you know, we're going to be in a depression. Yes, everything will be rising. Everyone will feel rich. You'll be earning a million dollars, but you won't be able to buy this week's food for a million bucks, right? Um, but we're starting to see the writing all over the wall now. So um, I'll, I'll read some of these articles. I'll tell you what it means and what I see off the other side of that. Article here, Sydney Morning Herald. Business is cutting back workers' hours as economy slows. Westpac. Businesses have been slashing employees' work hours to trim their expenses and stay afloat as high interest rates and inflation dampen consumer spending. <laughs> I remember saying to you guys before, when they increase interest rates, what they're going to be doing is increasing the price of things, and it's going to have a flow on effect, so it's going to actually negatively impact inflation. Discretionary sectors where demand has declined most due to the cost of living pressures on household budgets saw some of the biggest reductions in labour costs, but for industries cut their expenses in the last quarter, Westpac's latest bank transaction data slows, shows, shows, slows. Um, things are definitely slowing down with turnover down 3% in the last quarter, uh, said Westpac's head of business and wealth, Anthony Miller, but business expenses were down 4%, so they're okay position cash flow woes. Certain sectors, particularly there's been just little less labour required. The bank findings underlying data from Australian Bureau of Statistics, which showed hours work declined by 0.4% in the December quarter, and the under the underemployment measure, people who are in work but want to work more, ticked up four percentage points in the past year, despite expectations from the RBA that the rates of unemployment and underemployment will increase further. So Miller said uh, it wasn't something to be too concerned about. People are still busy. We have a very high level of employment. Uh, and there's still a lot of people there for the capacity spent, so the overall macro position is still positive. Um, um, so it's interesting to see these articles. They get much more exciting as uh, as I go on to these next two articles. Let's go, let's put that article aside. This one here is really cool. Right? This is what we're talking about here. This ain't a recession like you've seen beforehand. This is a very different beast that we're about to see. Um, it'll split um, the middle, and it'll hollow out a lot of the middle class as people become poorer and poorer. This article here, I don't even know which one, from news.com again. Uh, UK economy slides into recession ahead of election. Right? So we've got this guy, right? um, which, uh, you know, as we get into him, uh, go and do a bit of research into this fella and look at his family ties, uh, where his military uh, family contracts are based and stuff. We're not going to go too far down, too down that rabbit hole, but uh, it's interesting who the avatars that they that they place in these positions are. This goes on to say Britain is in a recession. Uh, official data showed on Thursday, dealing another blow to embattled Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, or whatever his name is, uh, whose Conservative Party is forecast, forecast to lose a general election expected this year. Gross domestic product shrank 0.3% for the fourth quarter of 2023 after contracting 0.1% in the prior three months, the Office of National Statistics said in a statement. That places the economy in a recession, which is defined by two quarters of falling GDP in a row. While economists predicted that the recession could be short-lived, the data is a big setback for him, who has placed economic growth as a key priority. It comes as a Conservative's badly trailed the main opposition Labor Party in the polls. 
uh, ahead of the general election. It's interesting to see all these countries out there, no one really cares about their government anymore, right? So uh, they know it's all a big scam. Now, is this recession as mild as they, as they come and timely indicators suggest already nearing an end? In a broad-based decline, all main sectors shrank in the fourth quarter with manufacturing and construction among the biggest drags. Just remember that, right? What are we seeing here in Australia? We're seeing retail going down. We're seeing uh, building going down. We're seeing everybody going broke because inflationary pressures, right? So if you hold an asset, that's getting inflated away as well. Is it that your house got any better? Is it that your car got better, any better? Is it that your food got any better? It didn't, let me tell you, food is getting worse and more poisonous, but it's a different story for another day as well. Um, what happened is your currency is being devalued and you're getting robbed. So, uh, so for those of you that are just tuning in now, UK economy is in a recession. We go and pick this up, right? And I talked about many years ago, I called the GFD, which is the Global Financial Depression. That's what I called it. I said in 2018 would end this depression. Um, and it would be a hyperinflationary depression. And it will be in a depression that, you yeah, know, middle class will get wiped out. They can't afford things, right? Um, but those that are set up right and use the instruments around them, because there are people that are becoming wealthy and rich from this. This is the bankers, the banking system, uh, those that are in power, those that are controlling. Uh, a lot of most people, 99% of people, are becoming poorer and poorer and losing, um, you know, abilities in their life to, to, you know, to do things. So their life is not getting in a better position. Um, so Japan unexpectedly slips into recession. <laughs> Japan has unexpectedly fallen into recession after weak economy, after its economy shrank for two quarters in a row. The country gross domestic product contracted by a worse than expected 0.4 in the last three months of 2023 compared to the year earlier. It came after the economy shrank by 3.3 in the previous quarter. 3.3 percent. Well, that's the interesting. If you ever see those sort of numbers that are lined up, right, like you see threes and 3.3s and 33s and stuff like that, it's like a little symbol, right? It's like 33 corona cases, 33 deaths, right? It's like they do a little um, alert on things, right? But it's interesting. It fell by 3.3 percent. It's a fucking lot in a quarter. Um, that, that figures from the Japan's cabinet office also indicate the country has lost its position as the world's third largest economy to Germany. Uh, economists had expected new data to show that Japan's GDP grew, born, grew by more than 1% in the fourth quarter of last year. The latest figures were the first reading of Japan's economic growth for the period and could still be reversed. Two quarters in a row of economic contraction are typically to be considered as the, the considered um, in definition, it's a technical recession. In October, the International Monetary Fund, which is the IMF, remember the IMF, and I said many years ago, I actually did a, a full mentoring program on what we're seeing today happening six, seven years ago. I said that we would see a thing called a special drawing right. So when our whole currency um, collapses, you'll see, I didn't think it would be a CBDC or anything like that back at the time, but I did say that we'd see a thing called a special drawing rights, which is where they'll pull buckets of currencies together and try and keep and strap those currencies together as a new currency that they would have. Um, so keep an eye out for the International Monetary Fund as we go through this next phase of uh, economy. So the IMF forecast Germany was unlikely, was likely to overtake Japan as the world third largest economy when it measured US dollars. The IMF will only declare a change in its rankings once both countries have published the final version of the economic growth figures. It began publishing data comparing economies in 1980. Economist Neil Newman told the BBC the latest figures show that Japan's economy was worth about 4.2 trillion in 2023, while Germany's was 4.4 trillion. Uh, let's go on to this next slide. It says, this was due to the weakness of the Japanese currency against the dollar and that if the yen recovers, the country could regain the number three spot. Interesting, lots of threes there in the conversation. That takes me on to um, this. Uh, we'll go to this one. This one here. This one was going to be here beforehand. ASX to rise, data bolster case for June uh, quarter rate cut. Uh, Australian shares are poised to rise, tracking the gains of Dow and the SP 500 after a weak retail um, uh, and industrial reports lifted hope that Federal Reserve will cut rates relatively sooner than later. The SP 500 closed up 0.6%, all briefly rallied above $83 a barrel. This was on the 16th of February, so Friday. Um, uh, 
Bitcoin holding above 52,000. Five of the significant seven stocks were lower. Tesla, Meta were higher. You know. They talk about rate cuts. They talk about recessions, right? I want to share with you. This one here is a fun one, right? Just remember this. Just remember this. Um, I said some pretty outlandish stuff over the years, folks. I said pretty outlandish stuff. This here is from the World Economic Forum, right? And if you are, if you're awake and open to you know, controlling entities and, and whatnot out there, uh, you will see that the World Economic Forum is a trustworthy, uh, always there. They're always there to give you their very important news and you know World Health Organization and whatnot as well, right? But here's an article from um, Negative Interest Rates: Absolutely Everything You Need to Know, right? Absolutely everything you need to know. When is this from? November the 2nd, 2016, right? So eight years ago, eight years ago, people were like, Birch, you're off your head, negative interest rates ain't gonna happen, we're not gonna go to 0% interest rates, all that. So this is from their website, right? World Economic Forum, negative interest rates, anyway. Um, I'm gonna read this, it's a, a, a nice little article, everyone should read it. Uh, I think I threw it in the birch feed the other day. If I didn't, I'll throw it out there tonight, just for the fun of it. Since the Great Recession, for those of you that don't know what the Great Recession was, it was the recession of the global financial crisis, which was in 2007, 2008, 2009, which uh, set us up. It's basically when our currency really died and was put in palliative care and hooked up to a dialysis machine. The dialysis machine being the central banks around the world um, and they've been printing money ever since to inject into these economies. And uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty funny. It says here, uh, a large number of advanced economies have been stuck with low growth and low levels of investment and inflation. Attempting to regain growth, central banks have taken increasingly forceful monetary measures of these. Perhaps the most controversial and least understood is negative interest rates. The Central Bank of Denmark was the first to go below zero in 2012. To the surprise of many, it did not result in stress into the financial system. In 2014, several Europe's central banks followed suit. Two years later, so did the Bank of Japan. Right? If you think about it, any interest rate or cash rate, when I say interest rate, I'm talking cash rate there, RBA, Fed, whatever, that is below inflation, really it is in a negative position if you look at that. Um, the um, uh, Central Bank of Denmark, yep, yeah, that line there, um, setting interest rates below, this is very important, I actually put a little highlight around here. Um, setting interest rates below zero is often viewed as an unconventional policy, but can actually be seen as a continuation of the perfectly normal monetary policy practice of moving the short-term interest rate in response to fluctuations in the economy. There is a limit to how low the interest rates can go, but it turns out this limit is not zero, and we haven't reached it yet. Just, let's go back to that one line, because that's the most interesting thing that you'll ever see, just remembering it's from the World Health, uh, World, World Health Organization, World Economic Forum, right? So it must be true, right? These guys, if you're not getting it between my sarcasm, these guys are irresponsible for controlling a lot of the things that are happening in our world. There is a limit to how low interest rates can go, but it turns out that this limit is not zero, i.e. below zero, and as the heading suggests, negative interest rates, but it turns out that it's not zero and we have not reached it yet. Right? So that's just interesting. My views on this is that the economies around the world are fucked. Right? Sorry, kiddies, right? but yeah. Not everyone's kid, but I mean, if you've got kids listening, there's apologies for my swearing, but you know, they need to know the truth. The world is fucked, right? And it's all an illusion. We've got an illusion of wealth, right? No one's car got better, right? No one's house got better. No one's food got better. You just were robbed of the currency. People literally, all of us, would get up, brush our teeth, go to work in the morning, and uh, you know, hop in the car, sit in traffic, earn money, go and pay taxes. We're fighting over this money, but really it's worthless. It's a belief system that the currency has any value and that's where the assets are the most important part. Um, interest rate cuts below zero largely work as they do, 
do in normal times with positive interest rates, though there are some differences. The effects on banks, for instance, and the psychological impact of interest rate plunging in the negative territory, more on this below. There's a little chart here of some of the countries that have gone into negative interest rates. So uh, this blue one is uh, Denmark and Switzerland. They went negative a half percent to one percent, so about 75 basis points going back in 2015 and 16. So we have had some of that. The short history, throughout history, it was widely believed that central banks could not move short-term interest rates below zero. After all, why would anyone pay to put deposit money in their bank or pay to lend someone money when they could simply just keep their cash at home for free? Cash has always had a zero interest rate. Um, it is widely believed that if interest rates dip below zero, even by a very small amount, everyone with savings would run to the bank to change them for ready money. The zero interest rate on cash was seen as the lowest point an interest rate could dip to at a point where central banks would be out of ammunition. Well, that gets me on the next article. We'll, we'll show off that for a moment and uh, get back to the article. Economists have come up with a very different ingenious proposals to circumvent the zero point and regain central bank's firepower. In the 19th century, Silvo Jezel proposed a tax on holding cash. In 2009, Greg Mankey uh, suggested a lottery scheme for randomly picking serial numbers on banknotes and declaring them void, making it risky to hold cash. <laughs> They're literally the value of cash. The currency has no value, right? The currency has no value. It's not real money. I'm not going to sit here and talk about gold and silver and Bitcoin and all that sort of stuff. But they're very good, important things for people to have through different times. But if money is worthless, just think about this, right? If your money is worthless, and where does money come from, right? Let's just say I'm going to write a loan here for all of you, right? Let's just say there's a thousand dollar loan. Right? I'm going to do a video on this shortly, separately. But there's a thousand dollars, right? And that's a loan. You, you, you're sitting here watching this video, you've just been gifted a $1,000 as a loan, right? And you can keep it for a year. You'll be like, yeah, I'll take it, right? And let's just say I'm gonna charge you 1% interest rate, right? 1% interest rate, right? So there's your bond, $1,000 at 1%, right? I give you this bond, you go, yep, I've got the $1,000, you go and spend it. And at the end of the year, you need to pay the $1,000 back or pay the 1% interest. So if you pay the 1% interest rate, um, that would be 10 bucks, right? So the figure up to the first 12 months is $1,010, right? You want to keep it for a second. Yeah, I'm just going to keep this very, um, very simple, right? You have to pay $20 interest. The question is, is where does the $20 come from interest, uh, from interest come from if you were to take the first cent of dollars that was ever created, right? And as you start, expanding these numbers, the quicker it becomes unaffordable to be able to repay this debt. Now, if we look at all the global currencies around the world, they're all bankrupt, right? And we're at a point where we're starting to see the currencies fall apart. And uh, to be honest, uh, I'm very excited by that because uh, we're about to see it. We're about to see it. Right? And I'm going to it sort of takes me to my next article. I've still got a fair bit of pages in this World Economic Forum one, but it really gets me into the topic of what we're going to discuss today and what I'm personally seeing. And I encourage you guys to tell me what you're seeing out there in the market when we get into the property market predictions for 2024. It says here, when central banks started dropping interest rates to below zero without adopting any measures to take cash out, to make cash costly to hold, it changed the prevailing worldview. Zero was no longer the lower bound of interest rates. It turned out that many were actually willing to pay for the convenience of not having to hold their savings cash. For example, Switzerland suggests that interest rates can go at least as low as 0.75 negative without triggering a large demand for cash. Views have been voiced on whether this effective lower bound might be what it depends on. But in the end, we still just don't know. No country has reached this point and it remains unknown just how much further interest rates can be cut before we can see a broad shift into cash. Um, how do interest rates cut below zero at work? Central banks hold money for the commercial banks. If the interest rate is cut below zero, it means that if the central banks can charge the commercial banks interest on that money, the commercial banks, meanwhile, can cut the interest rate they charge the customers by the same amount and make their money back, although there are some crucial exceptions for the bank deposit, which we can discuss later. Imagine a pension fund is holding a deposit with a commercial bank. If the interest rates drop, the fund might 
seek to buy financial assets with a higher return, such as bonds, which are long-term loans. This increases demand for, and therefore the price of these assets, which now has the cut rate transmitted into the... Um, missing a page here. Um, ultimately, the aim of the central bank is to increase economic activity and spur inflation from the lower or even deflationary levels that some countries are currently in danger of. These are at least four ways this can happen. Banks can lend more money to households and companies rather than holding on to cash, which has now become costly. Well, we've just seen that over the last couple of years. Businesses can invest more as funding investment is now cheaper. Households could save less, borrow more, borrow to spend more. Demand for currency could fall. This might lead to a depreciation of the currency and an increase in the price of imported goods and growing demand for the country's now cheaper exports. Just think about what's happened there, guys. That's what we've seen in the last three to four years. This article is from 2016. They write this shit before it happens and they're publishing these things and then they go, well, look, this is a, a case study that could happen and it's turned out to be correct and this is what we're doing. Some have argued that countries with ageing populations, incentives to spend will fall on their fears, faced with negative interest rates, savers and retired people who live off their pensions could be more likely to reduce their spending because they either have fixed saving targets or because they will live off their interest from their capital. There is no evidence that savers as a whole suddenly react to this new way of interest rate cuts into negative territory. However, the fact is that every single saver in an economy, there is someone on the other side borrowing this money. Think of a new house owners with high mortgages and car loans and startup companies or even the government. The world is awash of this crazy currency, right? It's all fake. It's all fake. Um, real versus nominal uh, interest rates. The kind of interest rates we're all familiar with is called a nominal interest rate. It measures the amount of money we earn in a year savings of $100. A real interest rate, on the other hand, measures how much of the $100 is worth in terms of what you buy with it a year later. If you want to buy bananas, for example, the bananas cost $1 now, but it will increase to $1.03 in a year because of 3% inflation. Your $100 bank pays no normal interest rate, then after all, you only be able to buy 97 bananas. Your real interest rate is negative three. Inflation is, of course, to amount to be negative interest rates. Controversially, if the price of bananas falls to 97 cents in a year, 3% deflation, then your $100 will buy you about 103 bananas, and your real interest rate is positive 3%, even if you don't receive any normal interest on the savings. So the real interest rate, which currently, which really matters the value of your savings, depends on the normal interest rate, but is also on inflation. So they have taken this and stretched it to two different ends of the, um, um, of the um, spectrum. So... I'll leave, there's like lots of information about this article. I will post it in Birchfeed. If you're not in Birchfeed already, birchfeed.com. It's free. Don't be a tight ass. Sign up. I post random stuff in there, but you know, if you think some of my stuff I post is weird, you don't have to watch it. Um, now, if we talk about that last article from the World Economic Forum, they talk about when you go to the negative interest rates, that you'll go and take your money out of the bank. If you notice that half the banks have closed down, um, you can't get more than like 500 bucks out and all these sorts of things. Um, here's an article that came out today. And I sent it, but also posted in the feed. Dangerous bank-owned and fee-free ATMs are disappearing, and here's the worry. So we've got a picture of, um, what is it, Caitlin Jenner? Oh, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, the, uh, the new uh, RBA governor. I thought it was Caitlin Jenner there for a second. Um, sort of a bit scared. Goes on to say the number of bank owned fee free automatic telemachines has more than halved in the past seven years, replaced with privately operated devices that slug users up to $4 per transaction. While a major of financial institutions rapidly shut a branch, shut, shut a bank branches and mothball ATM, major corporations and small time investors are alike flocking to fill the void and cash in. Professor Steve Walling from blah blah. One of the biggest costs of banks and other financial institutions is running branches in terms of premises themselves, the personnel in them. That's why we have seen a lot of branch closures. And very often ATMs are offered, operated by major banks are located in their branches. So when they close, they remove the ATM. Plummeting numbers since 2017, banks have collected closed 2,100 of their branches, data from the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority, APRA, uh, shows with 424 shutting in the 12 months to June 2013. So the level of banks closing is increasing at a very rapid rate. So in the last 12 months, 424 banks have closed in the country. Um, 
when the decision at the time of the by the government, major win for consumers, but in reality, it marked the beginning of the end of fee-free, convenient access to cash. When that decision was made, there were 13,814 bank-owned ATMs. So in 2017, 13,814 bank-owned ATMs. But by June 2023, that number had more than half to 5,693. So it's about 70%. 60, maybe 65% decline in um, in ATMs that are out there. So, well, what does that look like, right? So, for the World Economic Forum, talking about negative interest rates, we've got every country hopping into recession. They can't make negative interest rates because there'll be a run on cash, right? They remove the access, the on-ramps to get access to the cash. Everyone's just like, oh, yeah, I'll pay with my iPhone. I'll pay with my watch. <laughs> no, no shit on anyone that pays on the watch. I'm sure half of you do that, right? But you're not having control over your sovereign liberty and uh, and uh, the freedom that you should have upon yourself. So my thought in how this all works out, um, is there going to be dictators, someone going to get you know, a war, whatever. There's a war going on, right? If, you know, whether they're shooting with guns or whether they're shooting you with different things that go in your body or they're shooting your mind, the propaganda. It's all around us. We're in a war. But how can we profit from that, right? Because uh, in any war, uh, there's people profiting. They're selling, financing the war. They're, um, they're creating the weapons for the war. They, it's all different things that come from it, right? So <clears throat> this war's going, everyone's killing each other. Don't care about the noise. Don't get scared by it. But what are the opportunities that are in front of you that you can you know, adapt and, and, and take advantage of in your own life? Um, in 2024, our currency, we're going to see an economic crisis, right? It's, it's inevitable. Um, I said to increase those rates as high as you could because it'll cause a bigger problem and they'll have to fix it with a bigger solution. And my view is, and I've said this many years ago, is that we would go to a hyperinflation, we would go to negative interest rates, and we're just on the eve of that. Um, we've got everyone broker than ever, but we've got wealthy people out there that are out there expanding the currency supply because they're using debt instruments and other sort of financial instruments to be able to create more wealth and collect more assets. And inflation isn't, um, isn't going to um, be, uh, you know, what would you call it, right? If someone's ageist or someone's like racist or something like that, it doesn't discriminate. That's the word. That's the word I was looking for. Discriminate. Inflation does not discriminate against anyone or any item. Inflation's running rampant, right? Uh, if things are affordable, people flock to it. If it's not affordable, they don't go to it. So this currency will find a home. It will get printed. Someone will make money. Someone will be on top of this. Um, the question is, is, are you going to be in a position, are you, you know, mentally uh, prepared and set up and in a position to take advantage of those opportunities that they uh, do arise? So um, on that note, just my view of the world at the moment, um, uh, what do I see happening out there in the property market? Um, 2024 so far, uh, I've seen some interesting uh, numbers out there. I actually, I'm not going to disclose my IP, right? That's in my head. But um, I buy, <clears throat> for those of you that might be watching on the platform that don't know what I do here at Being Invested, um, I, I run a buyer's agency, run it like an investment firm, and um, I, I buy properties for investors and build up 20, 30 properties in their portfolios, those sorts of things. I was probably the first, one of the first few buyer's agents out there. Um, and we buy thousands of properties every year for investors. And um, with those properties that we buy, they're in all different markets. So I'm not going to share with you all my information, like this is where I'm buying or that's what I'm buying or, or whatever. Um, but in the markets that I'm buying, at, like I had one of my investors the other day. It was Friday afternoon at 4.50 p.m. And uh, they were scared of a pest and builder report. And I called them. <clears throat> like a crazy ex-girlfriend, right? I'm like, oh, I'm not me calling a crazy ex why do you leave me for whatever? I was calling and I was like, don't pull out, don't pull out, that deal's amazing. Why are you, why are you getting uh, scared for? Why are you getting scared for it? Um, they're like, oh, something wrong with the strata or we just, you know, we'll just wait for the next one. I was like, do not pull out, right? And uh, I actually surprised myself. So this property I bought maybe three weeks ago, four weeks ago, 
um, for 225,000 an undisclosed location. It's probably worth about 260 grand at the time, so it's probably like 20% below market value. Rent on it, I three fifty four hundred bucks a week, um, and then everything in the suburb had sold, like everything gone, right? <laughs> like toilet paper off the shelf, and then. Uh, I was just scrolling through and I was like, I'm going to find one. I'm sure there's a property in the same complex. The identical unit right next door in the same complex. So it had all the same attributes, the same issues, whatever, right? Uh, Offers over $300,000 and they want 320K for this property, right? I was like, fuck, guys, like this thing here, as you can see, 100 grand, we just had a laugh about it. They're like, yep, that will retract the rescission notice on that front. And um, that's not isolator right i had to pick up the phone and i called the investor out my staff I, they'd gone home well, i don't know like it was like after it was just after hours but it was i still had control of it by the lawyers and i was like hey call the lawyer email the lawyer retract it retract it retract it we've got a strategy behind it. it was it was pretty funny but um i'm seeing that nationwide doesn't matter if we're east coast west coast north south wherever right um i'm seeing that markets are rising dramatically out there. So um, I'd say that most of my stomping grounds where I'm very active in buying those properties that are 100 grand, 200 grand, 300 grand, 400 grand, up to about five, 600 grand, they've probably shifted 50 grand in the last, since the start of this year, since the start of this year. Um, the, I'm just reading some of the questions. I've got a camera that's sitting in front of all your comments. I moved it, so yes, anyway. So I'm trying to read behind it. I could move the screen actually. I move the screen. So I can see it instead of move the, the camera. Um, so yeah, I'm seeing that the property market is getting inflated. And if we look at the rents, um, if I look at the rents for the last 12 months, um, I personally, right, we manage thousands of properties in every, all over the country, right? Coast to coast. Um, the properties, I personally, review those rents um, at the lease renewals each month. Like last, yesterday, I did about 300 rent reviews. I ticked off and I'd say my team did about 80% of them, which were like, great. And I was like looking at them and I was like, no, nah, 20%, I could push an extra 20 bucks here, another 40 bucks there. And I went through and I'm, I'm sitting there calculating, right? Because at the end of the day, if a client gets an extra 50 bucks a week, we get the percentage of it, there's an extra five bucks a week, or whatever, just using it as an example. Like, the more money I make from my owners, the more money that comes through to the business. And uh, my investors' portfolios are an extension to my personal uh, portfolio. So, looking at these portfolios and the rents, I'm just sitting there going, oh, if I buy 10,000 properties and push all the rents up by 50 bucks, and you know, those figures just go boop, 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 right? And that's the opportunity, and um, it might sound bad, and I might have some commies that are going to go, Birch, you look at this guy, he's on the internet saying that rent should go up, and he's just, you know, talking about it like a, you know, Scrooge McDuck or whatever. It's the market, right? and, um, you know, there's always options, there's always choices, and, you know, just what it is. But fortunate enough that rents are rising for investors massively, and uh, our investors that have bought renting for 250 a week are now getting 400 a week, it's 150 bucks a week. You've got 10 of those properties. They're 1,500 bucks a week. Uh, interest rates start dropping. You're going to be retired. Your net worth has gone up because those properties have gone up 50k a year, 50k there. Um, the markets are very, very hot out there. So, um, what is my fees at the moment? Um, I think people that are too over leveraged might be in trouble. People that are too under leveraged are really in trouble. Um, if we just, I can't do a poll. I'm just talking shit on this one, but if we did a poll inside the chat here, right, and you just sit there and, I don't know, you're having beers or whatever with your mates next couple of days or something, sit there and ask them, um, if you could afford a house or an investment property, would you go buy that? Most people say, yeah, I could, I'd buy it, but I can't, I can't afford it, can't service it, can't get a loan, whatever. So looking at it from that perspective, interest rates came down, how many people are sitting there on the sideline would be wanting to go into the market, right? What's that going to do? You might be sitting there going, well, I'm gonna wait and see what happens with interest rates. Well, that's cool. If you need 10 properties to retire uh, and you're at one or two, how quickly can you get there, right? 
two years, a year, three years, five years? How long is it going to take you? You're going to sit there until it gets busy and you go, oh, I better run. <laughs> better start buying properties now. Everybody's out there buying them. Why can't I buy properties? Oh, poor me, right? The opportunities are out there. So I think, you know, this year I've made some commentary and goals and I did some other videos. So I'm not going to go to my personal goals all that much on this video because it's pretty repetitive. But I'm out there in the market looking and it's like, this is probably one of the last chances where you can buy properties at 200 grand, at 300 grand in another two years' time if it's impossible to find. Are you going to be the one that's taken through the cycle? Are you going to be one of the ones that sit there and go, I can't afford shit, I wish I could. This, this person's ripped me off. It's the old granny that bought their house. It's a greedy investor. Uh, where are you going to, to sit at that, um, at, that, at, that, at that point? So um, I don't... Do I see risks? I see some risks out there um, in specific markets and those markets that I see the mortgage stress risk. Um, there's a lot of the people that may have bought at one and a half million dollars. Um, they've got a loan at one point two million dollars, and um, you know their mortgage has gone up by four percent, and uh, there's an extra fifty grand a year that they have to come up with. And um, I say it, you know, with a look on my face, like, oh, you know, it just is what it is. It is what it is, right? And when you're signing up to a thirty-year mortgage to buy a property. Uh, you know, you're buying it over 30 years and what can happen in that period of time. But if interest rates have gone up for a year or two years, that's a year or two year window, right? When they come back down, what's it going to look like? So I think the risk, you'll start seeing the risk come off the table. But if businesses are folding, people are missing their jobs, there will become issues out there. But ultimately, they're going to have to reverse monetary policy and when they reverse monetary policy, it's going to cause greater levels of inflation. We have seen interest rates, right? Just think about this. Make a comment if, you, if you've if been looking in the market or whatever to buy a property. Leave a little comment on if you have seen prices in the last six months rise by 50K. It's a modest 50K, right? 50K, right? On a 200 grand property, 50K is 25%, right? Talk about inflation, right? Where's the inflation happening? Where's this is a point of having a recession proof property portfolio? Every nation around the world is in a recession, and there's properties that are going up 20%, 30%, 40%, 50% in a year. Uh, um, what's going to happen? It's in an interest rate increasing environment. What's going to happen when interest rates decrease in value and uh, more people come in and supply demand goes out of whack? So um, do I think that we're going to see sky falling with prices? I think there's some markets which are soft, and I'm talking about multiple millions of dollars markets. I think a lot of people are catching on to the idea that um, they can't go and replace it. So let's say you've got a house for one and a half million dollars and you want to sell it in downsize or sell it in upsize. Um, you may not be able to get the loan to rebuy it, so you're staying put. So you're taking liquidity out of the market. There's lack of stock. So there's lack of liquidity, and uh, there's a lot of reasons for that to occur, um, for a lack of liquidity. So uh, do I see price going up, down? I'm seeing it go up immensely at the moment. Um, I'm seeing some markets you know, plateau, and if things were to prolong, it could push down a little bit. Um, rent is absorbing a lot of things out there. Um, and as I said, it doesn't discriminate. Inflation doesn't discriminate whether you're a homeowner or a renter. Those things are going up. And it's not because your rent got any better. It's not because the house got any better. It's not because the food you eat got better. It's not because your car got better. It's not because the petrol that you're putting in your car got better. It all happened because you were robbed. You were stolen of your purchasing power. And, um, you know, I, was, I drew that thing before in where I said that thousand dollars, right? If I lent you a thousand bucks, right? If yeah, this, this is called this. This is called this hundred dollar. Let's call it hundred thousand dollar note, right? This is called this hundred thousand dollar note, right? If that's a hundred thousand dollar note, and it um, it lost its value, right? A <clears throat> um, hundred thousand doesn't buy what it bought you two years ago. Doesn't buy what it bought you five years ago. In nineteen nineties, a hundred thousand would have been like a millionaire. Uh, all that sort of stuff. Um, 
if money is losing its value, then if we were to go and call this a loan, my writing is shit, just quietly, folks. But if that was a loan for $100,000 and it lost its value, I'm taking $100,000, I'm paying you your 5% interest rate today, right? So here's your 5K per year. Let's think about that, right? You borrow 100 grand, 5% interest rate is 5 grand per annum. Let's just say I give you 5 grand. There you go, right? If you put your rent up 100 bucks this year, the, the, the rent increase covers your whole mortgage anyway. I digress. But if in 10 years' time, you pay off that 100 grand, that could be like paying back 10 grand, right? Because the money has lost it. So if the money has lost its value, well, then the debt has become an asset. And if you can get your head around that and realize that this is a banker's game, it's not just a property game, and it's these controlling entities of the world, which we talk about, these Facebook organizations, right? Because a lot of people that sit here, who sit at the table at this entity here, right? People that are very wealthy and they've got very privileged backgrounds and they're very powerful and very controlling. So if they're doing their game, right? You can see the game go on play, right? The table was designed for everyone to, uh, to sit at. Um, besides that, um, there's a, a big influx of stock. Um, we've had um, 650 or whatever it is, thousand people. You think about it, last year we migrated between Tweed Heads to Brisbane. That amount of people came to the country. They need a house to go to, right? They're just infilling them, backfilling them. So it's putting even more pressure on the infrastructure and that isn't going to change anytime soon. So um, yeah, uh, we need to build, for us to build inflation, keep the economy going. This next cycle, I think, we will see um, a currency crash. There's no coming back from the next cycle. Our currency, we're going to see inflation greater than ever beforehand. So um, uh, there could be instability. There could be, you know, weird news out there. Uh, be prepared. Be on alert to, you know, face whatever is thrown our ways. It's uh, exciting time to be alive. Um, I think how can you leverage your position um, you know, be prepared, understand what your goals are, understand what's happening out there, uh, make educated decisions, don't get caught up in the emotion of fear or um, ego or, you know, anything like that. Um, now, when I say ego, people get greedy and that's, a, that's an emotion, the emotion gets you killed. Um, with the rents, I think we're going to see inflation keep coming through on the rents. I think we're going to see inflation keep coming through on the prices, um, that's my personal view. So I'm going to leave it there, and um, I'm going to get into your questions um, and uh, answer them. So if you have a question, flick it through, and I'll try and wrap this up in a, you know, maybe an hour today. So Pink says, yes, it's been a while since you've been online. Yep. Um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. It's been, I feel great today being here with all of you. Sam says, hopefully the currency loses value soon. The sooner the inflation runs, the better. The rate cut should be the beginning of this. Uh, Lynette Zhang has a new channel, The Legend of the ITM. Yes, uh, for those of you that follow Lynette Zhang on YouTube, um, I've got to get her on my podcast one day. I'm going to get her on there. Um, Lynette Zhang left ITM Trading and she's now got her own channel at Lynette Zhang on YouTube. Um, really cool to watch that lady if you uh, if you are interested in that stuff. Um, Zach says inflation is better than sexy time. It's that good. It depends, right? And I remember that movie Big Short and uh, the guys were betting on the housing market to crash and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. And um, there was the, I think it was Brad Pitt was playing the autistic sort of old bloke that's like angry and pissed off with the world. And he's like, um, he's turned around to him. He said, don't get excited. Yes, you just made yourself $50 million or whatever, but um, it has an impact, flow and effect, right? So I think you know, we can get excited and, and all that sort of stuff, um, but be very careful for what we wish for, right? Because not just does our asset increase, but our living expenses do. And that's sort of, why I look from a holistic approach of having control of your food and, and all that sort of stuff because uh, 
expenses are going up a lot, so you need to keep your expenses in, uh, in, in check. Uh, Paul says here, hey, bro, uh, interest rates are killing me. Uh, I think they're killing a lot of people out there. Um, I like being able to pass on my expenses. So if I'm having to pay for mortgage, I like to make sure that someone else is paying it for me, not me. So um, for our principal place, the residence, for all of us, it's all going to um, you know, hurt us and impact us. But um, I think, as I said beforehand, we'll see a reversal in monetary policy this year. Um, you know, I'm not concerned at all. Like it has certainly hurt us all. Um, you know, people go, oh, Birchie, you don't know what it's like. I was talking to uh, one of my clients the other week. He said, oh, you know, you, you've got heaps of properties, right? It's like, okay, on a good day, if you've got one property, if you've got 10 property, or if you've got 100 property, or if you've got 1,000 property, on a good day, right, adding an extra zero, two, zero, three, zero, zero, four zeros on the end of it, however many zeros, on a good day, that's great. But on a bad day, when you add negative zeros, um, it's not a good thing. So it can hurt a lot more. So it, naturally, we're all impacted, but the opportunity that I see from an opportunity is I'm looking at the bigger picture. It's like, okay, just need to factor that in. Yeah, that's that's what we need to look at. So um, interest rates, can we, Daryl said, same interest rates, premiums too, uh, insurance premiums too, 100%, uh, everything's getting inflated. Uh, Monica says, you have to come and chat to my uni students about this stuff. Very happy to have the chat, Monica. Just um, send a message to my team and uh, we can organise something. I'm happy to do talks and be available to educate people however I can. So happy to. Uh, Mel says here, I don't have two cents to rub together. I learned so much from listening to you. Thanks uh, for your input on it all. I uh, appreciate it, Mel. Thanks a lot for uh, tuning in and, and having confidence in, in what I do and having an interest in what I say. So, um, this one here. Uh, Angelo says, modern day philosopher, five stars. Thank you, I appreciate it. But uh, I'm just sharing what I see. So, uh, Sacco says, uh, hey, do you, do you think an old red brick units in power will be worth a thousand bucks a week in a few years? I, I went to the dentist again today, right? I had some teeth cleaned and stuff like that. And um, when I left, I was like, shit, I need to get some floss. So I went to uh, Coles, just near the shopping centre here near the office. And um, I was sitting there and some chick was trying to wheel a wheelchair and a, kid, uh, a trolley out and the kids out. And I was like, stood back and I saw a glimpse at the fridge at the front, right? And uh, it had a sale on uh, and you get two bottles of Coke for eight bucks. <laughs> Eight bucks, right? Um, I I haven't eaten anything from a fast food for a couple of years now, and um, I do see Macca's signs and stuff, and uh, they they have their like big Mac meals and burgers for like eighteen bucks and stuff, and it's like I see that big Mac meal could be a uh, hundred thousand dollars in the future, right? We go to a third world country, and we go, oh, you know, you go to. I don't even know what country, right? But we're going to a third world country and a Big Mac meal is 500,000, whatever the currency is. Um, don't think that, that couldn't happen to our currency as well. And, um, you know, a thousand bucks a week could be nothing, right? And I, I do see, yes, do I see an old red brick unit going to a thousand bucks a week? Yes. But um, if the unit goes to $5 million and interest rates are a quarter of a percent at the bank, um, and a big Mac meal is two thousand dollars. Well, then the thousand dollars is irrelevant. So um, there's arbitraging to have as the currencies totally fall off a cliff. Um, yeah, uh, where do I see it going? It could go all the way up, um, and that's the exciting part about it. So yeah, um, Nate says got a bunch of properties that have gone up in the last twelve months. That's great. Uh, awesome. Awesome work on that. Um, Danny says, Birch, what's your rough time frame for the next cycle? We're in a property boom, but we've got high interest rates. Imagine what's going to happen when interest rates come down because they're totally screwed up. They have screwed all economies, right? Imagine when the government has to roll its trillion dollars worth of debt over. They're going to be paying 40 times more interest rate than what they were paying when they took that debt out. Um, so, yeah, we're in a new cycle. Um, it'll be interesting to see, but I think we'll see reversal of uh, 
uh, monetary policy. I said at the end of last financial year, at the end of last financial year, we saw the monetary policy change, and I wasn't too far wrong. It's just was probably six months too early for a rate cut. So um, yeah, stay tuned. I think we're going to see that very shortly. Um, Mel says, I've had no deposit for 10 years. Would it be hard to get a home loan? Um, I don't know much about your position, Mel, but if you would like to click us a message below or there's a there's a link in the description here uh, of how to book a discovery session, have a chat with my team and just see you know, what options there are. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I hadn't actually got a loan from a bank for 10 years and uh, I just thought, oh, I don't have a system, whatever. Right? It's like you have a, a mechanic that has a half-built car and you've got a build with a half-built house without driveway installed. Um, when I look at my portfolio, I'm like, I could, I could add extra zeros to mine, right? But I'm too busy doing it for everyone else. Um, and I've started talking to lenders and all that sort of stuff and it's like, wow, there's discussions happening here. So um, if you're not getting the answer that you want in your life, and this appears this is for everyone, um, just keep asking the question and go searching until you get the answer that you want and uh, do it. Uh, Rob says here, I legend, will you be selling and paying off any debt in this next cycle, inflation cycle, when they drop rates? Cheers. Um, no, no, I want to buy more. So um, I'm going to be cautious with the things that I say uh, on this Facebook Live, but I have said it last year, my intention is to buy, basically to double my holdings uh, over the next 12 months is my goal. So let's see uh, how uh, we go with that. Uh, I'm, so I'm doing the opposite. Uh, the Matrix are trying to beat us Kiwis down with the threats of ever-increasing OCR rates. Uh, the economy is dead here and the, um, the ginger ore is threatening to rate rises this year. Um, well, they're saying it, right? But if we're looking at the economy, it's like, it's like seeing... Who's seen a psychopath, right? And you would have come across one somehow in your lives like, I'm going to do this, right? And it's like, the more that someone loses power, the more that they get louder and vocal and they start shaking. This is, I'm pretending a robbery here, right? It's like, they've got no bullet in the gun, but they're pretending they're going to shoot you. And it's like, oh, I'm going to shoot you all, right? They can threaten all they want. But the factual is, and the writing's on the wall, that it's not what's going to happen when you pull that trigger. So um, just remember that, because that's really, you know, sound mind to be thinking. You've got to look at it all from the matrix of how it is. Um, so uh, I think good time to build uh, a granny flat in the backyard at Mum's place. Look, well, granny flats are things that I've never been a fan of, right? Um, you spend 100 grand on a granny flat and then does the property go up because the granny flat or rather spend it on a new property. Um, granny flats now, um, I've been told, are 200 grand a granny flat. If you're lucky and your builder doesn't go broke, right? For 200 grand, I'd rather go and buy a whole new property that brings up in, um, in, 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 in you know, capital growth and cash flow and whatnot. Uh, Chris says here, Big MacNeil is 100,000 rupee in um, in Bali. So, yeah, Big Mac, 100,000 of the currency in, in, in Bali, right? Um, who cares, right? But uh, that currency would not have always been with that many digits on it. So when our currencies fail, then you know, everything gets inflated away. We can feel rich, but we're really probably broke if we can't afford the big Mac meal. So, um, you know, yeah, cool, our, our house is worth $5 million, but a big Mac meal is 500000 It's like, it's it's way out of whack. So, uh, yeah, just be mindful of that. And Daryl says, lol, I remember two dollar bakery pies, I remember bags of chips, I'm showing my age now, folks. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, you look at the world now, it's like, 15 bucks for a bag of chips and all these sorts of things. It's crazy. Um, uh, Brendan says here, Nathan, it's still a good time to buy properties even though they've already gone up. Not all properties are going up, have gone up. Um, I'm buying properties still in 2024 that are cheaper than what they were in 2008, which is like 16 years ago. So um, if you're talking about buying a property in the Gold Coast, for example, I used to buy every month about 50 properties for myself and my clients. and um, those things I was picking up for two hundred, and now were you know six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars. Same as now drilled back in the day. The risk is caked into them, but there's properties that are in markets that are similar to that, but of you know today. So 
Uh, Mole, uh, great to see you online. Um, thanks for watching tonight, mate. Uh, so just reading here, hi, mate. Great learning as always. Thank you for the valuable insight. Awesome work. Can you please give me an example of a take-home income uh, of 100 grand from a property portfolio? Uh, what should be rental income target for this goal? Take-home income after interest rate and property maintenance, property management expenses. Thanks. Um, very good question. So if someone wanted to get a um, hundred grand income, I'll just break it down in a simplest format. So, and you can scale this as high or as low as you wish it to be. Um, so a hundred thousand um, uh, dollars is two thousand dollars per week. If your average rent is say 400 bucks a week, you're gonna need five properties renting for 400 bucks a week owned outright with no debt. So how would someone get five properties owned outright, no debt? We buy them, work hard, pay out all the debt. That's the suckers game because the, uh, the interest rate you're paying is cheaper. You earn, let's say it's a five property for 200 grand a piece, it's a million bucks. That million dollars worth of income you have to earn to pay the debt, you'd have to earn one and a half million dollars to pay it because you have to pay taxes. And then when you pay out the taxes, you pay down that debt, the interest rate you're saving at 3%, 4%, 5%, whatever it is on the day, is probably less than inflation. So um, a better way would be if you bought, say, 10 properties at 200 grand, they double, you sell off half, pay out the other half. Um, but the best way is if you bought 10 properties and you push the rent up, 50 bucks this year, 20 bucks next year, 40 bucks the year after, and over a few years, you've got 100, 200 bucks a week positive cash flow and you scale it on size. So um, yeah, if you've got 100 bucks positive cash flow, well, you need 20 properties. If you got $200 positive cash flow per property, like if we look back at say like Gold Coast and properties like that, uh, Mount Druid, Penrith, whatever, um, and those properties were you know, 200 grand renting for 300 bucks a week and now they're 600 grand, yeah, they've gone up, but then if the rent's now 600 bucks a week, you're positive 300 bucks. If that positive 300 bucks a week times 10, there's three grand a week, so it's 150K. So there's different ways to have it, but we, you know, I'd say between, say, six, and 10 properties would get you to 100 grand a year pretty comfortably in a couple of years. So that would be my view. Um, uh, little by little, they will bring in a CBDC 100%. Uh, CBDC is communist, 100%. Um, on debt, debt, not deposit, yes. Um, if you've got no debt, yeah, that's fine. Like, um, yeah, Mel, if reach out to the team, let's see what we can do for you. <laughs> Patrick says here, uh, McDonald's soft serve code at dollar fifty. Dollar right? fifty. Those things used to be thirty cents, and then they went to forty cents. And if you think about it, when it goes from thirty cents to forty cents, that's twenty five percent increase. But when it goes from fifty cents to seventy cents, only twenty percent increase. And it's 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 creeping up. So interesting, interesting time to be alive. So um, yeah. On that note, folks, one last thing as well, when your ice cream's back in the 90s, when you get food, right? Let's say we go to Macca's. Macca's used to cook their chips in tallow, beef tallow, right? And now they're cooking in vegetable oil, right? And there's a very big difference about what you're eating in there and inflammation and all bad things. So I'm not trying to get into food and health or anything like that, but it's like the quality of our lives, the quality of what we're being, being put in front of us. If we were to really go back and would eat like we were of the 90s. Um, if we think about a shopping trip, everyone goes, oh, my shopping, my grocery bill has gone up from 150 bucks to 300 bucks or whatever. It's like, hang on a second. If you were to eat the same food as what you were in 2004, let's go back 20 years ago and say that the food that you ate in 2004 is the same as what you're eating in 2024, um, there is a very, very... Uh, big difference. So if you were to buy the quality of the food, you might be paying $600 for what used to cost you $100 in a shopping trolley. So just be really conscious of you know, the chemicals and the, the quality of, of what we get. So on that note, folks, uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Uh, if you do need help with your portfolio uh, or want to have further discussions with myself and the team, uh, you know where to find us, uh, 1-300-367-925. Send us an email, admin at beinvested.com.au uh, or click on the link. Um, you know, it's up on the top of the screen. It's beinvested.com.au slash discovery dash session. The link's up there. Uh, type it in and uh, reach out to the team today. Um, We'll catch up soon. Thanks, guys. Bye for now.